Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Sciences. Video 22, it's on energy concepts. I was just wondering how much energy it takes to do a Google search, and so what did I do? Of course, I did a Google search. How much energy does it require? And what you get really quickly, it, fourth one down, is a document from Google themselves. And they said that a typical Google search takes 0.2 seconds and requires 0 0.0003 kilowatt hours. So that's fast, but I don't know how much energy that is, and so we can use energy concepts to figure that out. So that's that's the energy, and I want to convert it to something that I actually know. So how much time could we run a light bulb, a 60 watt light bulb, in the same amount of energy? So I'm going to take the known quantity from Google. I'm doing dimensional analysis, so I always put this over 1. And then I'm going to look up a conversion, because we know that 1 kilowatt hour, I'm going to put that on the bottom, is equal to 3.6 million joules of energy. That's just a conversion between two forms of energy. And so what I'm doing is I'm canceling out the kilowatt hours and now I've converted it to joules. That seems like a lot of joules at this point. And now I have to convert that to seconds. Well, I know that a watt is equal to a joule per second. And so 60 watts is 60 joules per second. So I can cancel out my joules and now I just multiply everything across the top, divided by everything on the bottom, and I get 18 seconds. Now if that seems hard, hopefully as I've gone through this video at the end you could solve a similar problem. But what does it mean? One Google search is the same as turning that light on for 18 seconds. And to me that seems like a lot of energy. 18 seconds isn't that long but it seems like a long time, so I'm not gonna wait that long. So if we look at what energy is, energy is the ability to do work or transfer heat. You probably learned this before, it comes in two forms. We have potential energy, which is due to position, and then we have kinetic energy, which is due to motion. And so chemical energy, so the energy in a fuel, for example, is potential energy. It's energy in the bonds of the chemical. And then something that's really important, electricity is actually a form of kinetic energy. Energy is conserved. It can neither be created nor destroyed, and and that's the first law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics you should become familiar with, and that's this idea that as we convert energy from one form to another, we lose energy, that eventually becomes heat, and increases the randomness of the universe, or the entropy of the universe. The unit of energy is the joule, but you're gonna find tons of different units out there, from the kilojoule, to the BTU, to the therm, and the hard part is that you're going to have to make conversions between those different forms. And if you have a really good grasp of dimensional analysis, it's really not that hard. Power is the amount of energy that we use for a given period of time. So it's the rate of energy use. We measure that in watts, and one joule per second is equal to one watt. Now you'll also see kilowatts a lot of the time, and that's going to be a thousand watts. And so energy, remember, can be potential or kinetic. So if we take this crate and we lift it up, it now has potential energy. It has gravitational potential energy. And as we drop it, it releases some of that energy as kinetic energy. Now that box itself still has potential energy. It has energy in the bonds. We call that chemical energy. I could release that by, for example, burning it. Another type of kinetic energy that's really important is going to be electricity, some motion of those electrons. The key point is that energy is conserved. That's the first law of thermodynamics. So if we drive this car from point A to point B, we used energy. We did work on that car. Now where did it come from? The gasoline. But before that, it was in the oil. Before that, it was probably in some kind of a tree. Before that, it was in the sun. So we're just converting one form of energy to another. The second law of thermodynamics talks about what happens to that energy as we do these conversions. And so we've got input energy, and then we're gonna have output energy. Some of that's gonna be useful, energy in the motion of the car, but a lot of it's gonna be waste energy. It's gonna be heat, it's gonna be sound, and eventually what happens is all of that energy becomes non-usable or heat. The first person to really figure this out was James Jewell. What he did is had an apparatus where he had paddles inside water, he would have a weight that fell, and as they spin, they heat up the water, he could measure that with the temperature. That's why we call it the Joule, capital J. Another way to think about it is it's the force times the distance. And so imagine you take an apple, an apple has a gravitational force of around one newton, and you lift it one meter. That's one joule of energy required to do that. Now you could move it slow or you could move it fast, but if you move it that distance, that's gonna be one joule. How do we tell the difference between moving it fast and slow? That's going to be power, and we measure that in watts. That's the amount of joules for a given period of time. So let's say it takes me two seconds 
to lift that apple one meter. So how many joules is that? Well, it's still one meter times one newton, so one joule. Since it two, took two seconds, that's gonna be 0.5 watts. What if I lift it in one second? That'd be one watt. What if I lift it in a half a second? That's gonna be two watts. And so the amount of power in a 60 watt light bulb would be like lifting that apple in 0 0.0167 seconds. So it's really, really a huge amount of energy. And so there are lots of different forms of energy that we have. So to convert between these two, you have to know the conversion. It's not something you should memorize, but you should be able to look it up. So one joule is what we measure. It's our base standard SI unit of energy. If we have a thousand joules, that's a kilojoule. When we're talking about food or the energy found within our food, you'll see calories and kilocalories. One calorie is 4.184 joules, but the actual calorie we, we're talking about in our food is a kilocalorie. And so one kilocalorie is going to have 4,184 joules. You'll also in see in some air conditioning and heating systems, BTUs or British thermal units. So we've got a conversion here to joules. We could use therms, which are a larger amount, or we'd even talked about at the beginning, these kilowatt hours. All of these, even though it has the term hour in it, all of these are measures of energy. It's because we're dividing our power by a certain amount of time. When it comes to watts, it's a little simpler. We've got a watt, which is joules per second, and then we've got kilowatts as well. And so you should understand these conversions. I wouldn't memorize them, but how to apply it in a problem. And so let's say you're given a problem like this. We've got a 75 watt light bulb. How much energy would this use in a day, in 24 hours if we left it on? So you're gonna start with your known. So we've got a 75 watt light bulb. So I'm gonna put that 75 joules per second. You could pause the video now and try to solve this one on your own. But let me show you how to do it. Uh, I could work either on the energy side. So I could go towards kilojoules or I could go towards hours. I'm gonna to go towards kilojoules because I have a conversion up here. I know how I can go between joules and kilojoules. And so I could write out that conversion. I'm gonna put joules on the bottom, kilojoules on the top. So I've already moved from joules to kilojoules. You can see my joules would cancel. I wanna go from seconds to hours. And so how do I do that? Well, I know that 60 seconds is equal to one minute. Now my seconds cancel. I could go from minute to hour, so I know that 60 minutes is one hour. So I've got it all the way to kilojoules per hour, and how many hours does it run? It's gonna run for 24 hours, so that's my last conversion. So all my units will cancel, and I'm gonna be left with, out, with kilojoules at the end. So I multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. So it's gonna be around 6,500 kilojoules with significant digits. And so the best way to solve problems like this is to do problems like this. And I'll put some links to problems in the video description down below. But did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and try to answer? what's in all the blanks. So again, energy is the ability to do work or also transfer heat. It can be potential, which is due to position, or kinetic, which is due to motion. The unit is the joule, but we have all different types of joules, or rather energy forms that we can use. Um, so you have to understand not only the conversions, but how to do the conversions. Um, the watt is joules per second. Thermodynamics shows how energy is conserved. We got the first and the second. That's energy, and I hope that was helpful.